read right on into our county case REZ 2018-12 uh, stubs. Yes, sir. So with this request, there, there have been updates since uh, the work session on, on last Monday. Um, but just walking you through, you now have the completed recommendation of the staff in front of you. And ultimately, what they're asking for is to change the zoning on this property from EA Agricultural to Crossroad, or sorry, General Commercial CG. And they would like to develop a mini storage business. They also would like to have their office for their existing um, metal construction business as a part of the property. Um, what that leaves you in the balance is it's about 12 acres. So that leaves you with about potentially, they would like eight acres of mini storage and what they call outdoor storage, what we call outdoor storage, which is yeah. like boat RV type storage. And that leaves you with about 4.8 acres of speculative commercial. Now the speculative commercial right now is planned to be on the southern end because it doesn't indicate it on your map, but it's, it is wet on that southern end property. And so that's just something we don't know how wet, but you know it's wet enough for the county engineer to say when they turn in plans to potentially develop it, we're going to want a wetland delineator to go out there and show where that line is. So I think right now the applicants, before they spend money on something like that, they have a concept, but they don't know general detail specs yet of how the property can be developed overall because they don't know how much space they're working with. Now, based on all the questions that came up last week, um, there was a question about the depth of this property, and that is a factor. So the depth of the property at the very northern end is about 230 feet, and it gets narrower to about 160 feet, and at the bottom, which is the wetter end, still widens out to about 330 feet. If you were to go to Baytree Road, okay, drive down Baytree Road towards the college, um, Southwest Georgia Bank, the bank right there on the corner of um, Gorto, no, not Gorto, Mac, Melody, Melody and Baytree, Southwest George Fairly New Bank, that's 150 feet deep. So that's about how deep this property is at its most narrow, is 150 to 160 feet deep. So those houses that are along Baytree as well are about 150 feet deep. Um, Big Nick's is about 200 feet deep. The shopping center where you have um, Eliano's and Jimmy John's and uh, Masado's, that's about 330 feet deep. So that gives you kind of the depth of this property is, it looks really wooded, because it is, but the depth is still not very deep. But it's it's wide enough where you can do something commercial. I would argue it's not wide enough to really do a whole lot of good residentially. But that just gives you some depth scale right there. Um, Jason, why did you choose CC versus CG? CC does say it's permitted in the comp plan, but there's a kennel with an outdoor run and a car repair that's allowed in CC zoning that I feel like would not be appropriate on this property, especially with those residences right on the line to the north. I mean, they are on it. And then finally, you know, Jason, okay, what can you see here from a planning standpoint? EA is fine. Um, RA, I think, could work here. You could do probably RA zoning here without much trouble. Or to me, you go into commercial, which is where I had to. Uh, negotiate this one on and we had a case probably 10 or 12 years ago that you have in your packet where they wanted to go manufacturing and at that time we just did not recommend for manufacturing I still don't but we did recommend I at that time said well what about CC the Planning Commission said what about CA with some conditions on the uses at that time but ultimately the County Commission denied the request so we've seen some activity on this property before it's a very interesting property I, I I can tell you that I've been out of the office for the past two working days. Unless there's some messages I have, which I have probably four or five, I don't have any opposition to report. I've had some questions about the property, but no one has really said I'm against it like we had when we had M1 probably 10 years ago. So it's a very interesting property. Um, one of the factors that in my mind is very significant as far as my recommendation was its intersection at Franks Creek and Union. It was the intersection of two collectors. So ultimately where I um, ferreted out, and you can see that with staff report, was everyone else was at approval. I thought it was very appropriate to have one condition, and that is to require a buffer along the entire balance of Union Road and the entire balance of Interstate 75. Um, 
I felt like that buffer was appropriate and would help make this property better. The applicants were aware of my um, request for a buffer, and, I, and they're here in case you have any questions for them tonight. We have Mr. Stubbs as well as Ms. Gaskins, his office manager. So beyond that, I do I think this case can work, and I think that brings you up to speed. The only thing that is a weakness for us is, of course, some messages that I've not just caught up to yet. I was actually on vacation today, but I came in uh, for tonight's meeting. So is a 10-foot park? Buffer, is it going to trigger a variance or anything on this? No. They they are pursuing a series of variances because our mini storage regulations are very restrictive. Um, but no, we, we don't think it will. It will it should fit inside. He wants about a twenty to twenty five foot setback on both sides. And I thought about a twenty foot buffer, but I really settled out with ten because I felt like you could get, you know, probably a ten foot landscape buffer and then an access drive before you got into a building. And that may be a requirement, if, depending on what fire rescue and inspection says. And that's, I'm glad you brought that up, sir. So the site plans they gave us um, are for concept only. Those are not approved site plans. They show some variances being approved. And also fire rescue and inspections and in engineering, they haven't approved those turn angles. We just asked Mr. Stubbs for a site plan to just show us conceptually kind of what you're thinking. So those site plans have not been approved by staff, but it just shows you concept-wise, you know, the scale of the property because it is pretty large, you know, length-wise, but depth-wise it is not. So it gives you a good picture, but it's not something that all staff has said, yes, we're 100% okay with this idea. I think it gives you an idea, um, but not something that, you know, aisle widths and turning radius, all that hasn't been worked out with engineering fire and stuff. So you don't have any fencing around this, I'm just curious. They're going to want to fence the entire mini storage and outdoor storage part of the operation. Okay. That, and that'll be something that I believe we require and they, they want. They, they want to be able to control access to the site except through their own entrances. No, he just asked. I was asking, uh, my question was going to be about the buffer. Is it working mm -hmm. in it or otherwise? But I, I guess a combination of both. I would. I mean, if you look on the property, there's some, you know, if they cleaned up the underbrush, there's some nice trees they could save that would probably meet or exceed our requirements if they kept that. And I think they're open to that. I just, they just have not done a tree survey yet. You know, they, they have not gone that far to say what's it really going to be. So that's why we try to leave them flexibility of, you can either tear it up and replant, which is four, typically four shade trees and, you know, 25 shrubs for every 100 feet. Or if you can clean it up and just keep the existing, that works too. So we try to give them some flexibility, not to say the best idea is to nuke the property and have to rebuild it from scratch. I don't, I don't think that's the best idea. Okay. You have a question for staff? The site plan we have on the screen now, Jason, this, these buildings are proposed, of course. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't cover 8.1 acres, so they're reserving additional land for expansion. That's right. So right now, this is like a phase one. That That's exactly right. I would say this represents, and Mr. Stubbs can, can correct me if I'm wrong in just a minute, mm -hmm. but I think this represents what they're willing to do on their first phase. Okay. Because what they also want to do that this site plan doesn't show is it doesn't show that outdoor storage area. And that is absolutely something for them that's very important to their business model. They really feel like there's room for people who want to store their boat or RV that covenants don't allow it in their neighborhood, but they want to store it in an area that is secure and um, and taken care of. And nearby. And nearby and close. Commissioner Glenn. The actually this sort of builds up on, on builds on your question, Commissioner, but the in the zoning map, mm -hmm. the area that's south of the orange, the area, what is what is that? Is that EA? Is that zone EA? Yes, so everything that is white is EA. Okay. Everything in the orange color is RA. Um, so potentially there is along Union Road, we have about a little bit less than 3,000 feet frontage that potentially could become storage, out outdoor or mini storage. Yes, which was one of my other motivations for a buffer is, while it's not a deep property, it is a long property. I mean, you're, you're talking about over half a mile of well, frontage. I mean, I've, with 160 feet, the downtown blocks, the buildings in downtown are 100 feet. Some mm -hmm. may be a little bit more than that, but that just gives you an idea of the size of this property. But my concern is clearly having 3,000 feet uh, of storage, mm -hmm. which is the facing these 
residential areas and potentially more residential areas in the EA. However, this is along I-75, and it's a very narrow mm -hmm. law. Not so oh to me, having this as a commercial, general commercial zoning is actually appropriate. It's just what type of commercial goes on that property. That's you know. And let me speak to your scale. So our mini storage regulations right now say you can only have your maximum amount of mini storage you can have is five acres. Okay. And so they have requested for a variance to that minimum and said, I believe they proposed 8.3. So that's so even if um, the Planning Commission approves this, there's actually a public hearing next week at the Board of Appeals where they want to increase that minimum to, I, I think it is 8.3 acres. So it's not 12. So even if they come back and say, you know, Jason, we got the zoning, got all these variances, we want to do 12 acres of mini storage they'd have to do another public hearing to get there. Because right now it's five, they requested 8.3, which within that 8.3 is also the outdoor storage. So we consider, when you fence it in to up, it's one operation, which is fine. That's the way they want it, which is fine with us. But when you go from you know, buildings to actual outdoor storage, we consider that one umbrella business. So that 8.3 would actually be, we think, some buildings and some outdoor storage, RV boats, et cetera. You know, even, you know, we, we restrict junk cars, but I mean, one of the uses that they have in their business is military, I got deployed, I need somewhere to put my car while I'm on deployment. I mean, they, they want to be able to cater and market to those type of those type of uses. And one thing we have to remember too is the southernmost portion of this property is too wet to build on. So they're going to keep it I don't know how many acres that is down in the southernmost portion, but I know it's wet. So they're not going to be able to build in that entire 12 acres. No, I don't believe so. I mean, I think it's at least one, if not closer to three acres. And they realize that, which is yeah. why they're starting at the high, higher, drier land right. in the north and trying to go to the south. <clears throat> Any other questions for staff? I, I got one more, maybe. This on the west side faces I-75, I'm assuming mm -hmm. that. And it's a narrow piece of property anyway. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about buffering, you're gonna take up a certain amount of buffering on that side. Mm -hmm. Is there really a need to buffer on that side? Because we buffer on both sides, you took up 20 foot of the 100 and something foot. I can understand the part that's on Union Road side, mm -hmm. but I-75, um, just, just thinking out loud there, because it's, you're utilizing some, that narrow space. Yes, sir, and, and I, you know, they want, they've asked for 20 or 25 foot setbacks on both sides. They've asked for a variance there because the property is just so thin. And I was telling the chairman, the initial front yard setback requirement was 75 feet. And it just was gonna, that's just appropriate for maybe a different property, but for here, that just really kills the property. Yeah. So, we got down to about 20 or 25 feet. My initial buffer request was 20 feet. But when you look at how things are gonna lay out, I went back to 10 because I wanted something that fit within that setback requirement of 20 to 25. Why I think I-75 is important, and I actually think it's more important than Union Road, is because you have 40 plus thousand people laying their eyes on it every day. And I think we can do better than just the back of the metal bill. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, honestly, that's where I went was, to try to require something, and to Mr. Stebb's credit, he was like, I think I, I support that. But that's why I went there, is I really think if you drive into some of these larger towns, Jacksonville, Atlanta, and you have metal buildings back and right to the interstate, I'm like, man, that's, you know, that can be, eventually, if it's the whole interstate, that's fairly unsightly to me. I feel like if you set a trend now, where it's even a small amount of approved land, or improved landscaping, I think it's a nicer aesthetic environment than than the back of a building and a fence and right away. Okay. Just let me piggyback off that. So if we, if, if we don't require the landscaping or interstate, but some kind of solid screening like mm -hmm. we did at the place on uh, on North Ops Road a couple months ago, would mm -hmm. that we deal with that? Are you, is that, would that solid screen work the same way? I, I think the ones on North Ops Road have turned out very well for that property, especially when you look at how it backs up to music. Yes. Um, but I don't know, sir. I think I'd really, I think I'd rather like either landscaping or keeping some of those trees there rather than just a, a metal fence. I just think that would be better. Yeah. This is um, I, mean, I, I 
mapping the, vertical, the verticality you can get with the landscape buffer will help a lot better than just having a six foot or an eight foot fence. We, that's, you can barely see that from I-75. And so part of my recommendation within that paragraph of a condition is that you know, Mr. Stubbs, as he develops, the buffer will be developed. So I'm not, I think it's unreasonable to say, great, you're approved, now do 2,700 feet of landscaping right off the bat. I just think that as you develop, we expect to see those improvements is the way I tried to scale it. I just didn't want things to be required all of a sudden. I feel like that, it's just too much to put on him at one time. Uh, <clears throat> the 25 foot, and I, I too, I believe it should be a vegetated, just because it's uh, where it is, you know, on the 75. Well, when you're on the Union Road side, mm -hmm. there's the power lines that run down Union Road. And that's, they're not going to be able to put anything under those trees. So that's going to set back 25 feet there. Yeah. And, and so by the time you get, you've got a 75 foot dead space through there when it's only 150 feet wide at that point. I don't. We don't know for certain yet if those power lines are on the right of way or on the property. So we just assume, okay, worst case scenario, let's just say they're on the property. You either A, work with a power company to make them underline or underground power lines, or if you leave them there, our um, landscaping regulations have certain trees and specimens that are required within 30 feet of a power line. So they have a certain canopy that doesn't conflict like a live oak would. Yeah. you know when you're in that space so we actually have which is one of the reasons why i use those breaks as a backup was we have special planting requirements when you're near power lines so that's a weakness on the front it absolutely is i you know there's existing vegetation there but i don't know because the survey doesn't tell us clearly is that on the property line or is it on the right of way so i think right now i would lean on the fact that we have regulations that specifies here's a list of trees that are approved within 30 feet of the power line. Well, even when you know, one, I don't, I know it's a main feeder through there because it, if my house feeds off of that line, mm -hmm. and I live over in the channel there. So, I mean, when you find the power line, it's right, right, right along there. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, you know, I don't know that A, they're going to put it underground. And uh, I don't know, you know, I think you may, you may not want to do that. Understand. But uh, there's also a fourth water main, a fourth sewer main out in front of that. And I know that's in, it's going to right away out there. Yes, sir. And, uh, but, you know, I just, I, and, you know, all know my feelings on this. I just think we, you know, commercial property in this area, Residential and agricultural way it is, I think it's maybe it pushing the envelope a little bit. Uh, we've got, and, and I know they're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of buffering and screening and this that and the other. Uh, but from the interstate side, I, I agree with the 25 foot vegetation barrier. I just don't know where the one on the Union Road side is. Mm -hmm. And I go through there quite a lot, going from Shiloh, especially with the construction on the interstate right now, on the bridges. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to become even more well used in the future as the county widens 41 up to the Scruggs plant there to where Union Road comes in. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring a lot more traffic back in there. So, I agree. I think it's only going to get busier, sir. And I, we could, you know, a sur a, the, his surveyor is capable of saying the power lines are on this property or not. Yeah. But how much time that takes is a concern. Um, how much his surveyor may charge him for that information is another. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just don't have a definitive. And I thought it was a good point when you brought it up because I remember seeing those power lines on my side of it. But I do not know whether it's entirely in it or not and how much that's going to cut off. Even if it if it's on his property, his engineer is going to have to calculate for that in his development they won't let him build many storage buildings under those lines i mean he'll you're have to back you've got a right a, a right away on the power lines anyway yeah i mean a, a easement on those power lines that you can't build on no. okay. so, so that's I, yeah i did i made a site visit but quite honestly i did not pay much attention to the power lines maybe i should have but it, 
power line front along Union Road. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On the side where the property is. Yeah, yes, sir. On the property, and except for this cleared area close to the top, which I guess is the north. Mm -hmm. All these trees running right now are in sync with the power line. I'm sure they are. They have to be trimmed back. They're behind. They're behind the power I bet they have to trim them back. Yeah, they do. They, they, they trim them back, but they may not be total right away. They just keep them trimmed back. Yeah. <laughs> they come along with their trimmers and with their their spray. Yeah, I do. I bet they have to be trimmed back. I think we just need to keep sight of the fact that this is simply just a rezoning request at this time. And, you know, his concept plans could change at any time. So we just need to keep in mind that we're just being asked to consider a rezoning request. <clears throat> One more thing about that is uh, a lot of times we play with a Dutch boy here. We stick our finger in the dike. And I think if we put commercial property in here, we're going to be pulling our finger out of the dike. And uh, if you look at this, it's, it looks an awful lot like spot zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to open it up in the near future if anybody wants to come along in there. And we, if you've approved one, you've got to approve the rest. Or you have a, have a big problem there. Well, you've got a piece of property here that you're not going to be able to do anything else with. Right. Well, Except you're not going to be able to build on it. You're right. not going to be able, from what I see here, and you buffer it on both sides, and you're going to narrow it back in to where you can't put anything but one row of, of uh, storage bins down the middle. That was my point. I to begin with. That we still got to look, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not conducive to the comprehensive plan, is it? So, crossroads commercial zoning is allowed in the future development map. Our challenge is just because something shows is allowed doesn't mean it's appropriate. That's exactly. where we come in and say, okay, Here's the zonings that are appropriate. Is it something we think it is? And so Crossroads Commercial was invented because you have rural areas, <clears throat> Naylor, where you just get an intersection of two roads that people start building and developing around, and we wanted some zoning that allowed for that. Now, why I have used why I've not used CC zoning and why I'm going to CG is because you have neighbors to the north that are super close. So I could do CC zoning and just say no outdoor kennels no repair but rather than that i'll just do cg because it was really invented to be commercial next to residential i'm just i'm just asking that we look at this before we make any decisions mm -hmm. i mean you know uh, i realize i'm playing a bit of a devil advocate mm -hmm. here but uh that's just the way i feel about it you know we got you know this piece of property is hard to develop and it was going to be hard to develop when it was bought mm -hmm. uh, or when it was split when they developed I-75 is the yeah. history y'all yeah, gave me. The state didn't do us any good by leaving it on a piece of property now. Yeah. But then the state don't always do us good. Well, it was so, fine when it was owned by the Parker family, yeah. but then when it starts to sell off. To me right now, the only thing it's good for is to line up some trailers in there and, you know, yeah. have you a mobile home park or do something like this, yeah. which I think is... Most I just don't want us to restrict them with, with conditions to the point. Exactly. That's my main point. Right. I, agree I don't want them to restrict them down with conditions until. Yeah. That's the reason I was, I was almost entertaining the idea of what Franklin was talking about, putting a, the metal side on there to allow more room on the. And I'd be fine. In, in, the, in the total. Yeah. Green screening on the yeah. road is looks nice. Yeah, and what do you, what do you call that? So this is a metal screening board. Metal screening. Right. Okay. It's the back of the storage unit. It says no fence there. But, uh, there is a there is a metal fence there, and then the what you see the green is the back of the but, store. But it's, it's the screening that we approved no. for that. No, we one of the we had a fence going up there that was. Matt, I'm not sure. Is it the back of the units or is it an actual fence? No, it it fits between the the panel and the building. Could that be off the road? Wasn't it supposed to be a wooden fence that you couldn't see through? Solid fence. But that's not our or his apparently uh, Mr. Problem. Chairman, yes, one question. Yes, ma'am. Since we are talking about the case here in Valdosta, was that not a plan development <clears throat> case? That was a it wasn't conditional a, use. It was a conditional, conditional use. use. So it's not exactly equivalent to what we are doing here, which is a rezoning case. Mm -hmm. you, you can get, so, typically, Matt, you get more specific <coughs> on a conditional use exactly. than you do with so, the rezoning. But. And I guess what I'm driving at is that we, 
if mini storage does not happen there, what sort of a buffer then will go in that location? So mm -hmm. we're being so specific, but because right now we are not actually reviewing the site plan, we are talking about the properties use change, zoning change from mm -hmm. uh, EA to uh, commercial, to general commercial. And so if we mm -hmm. are specific to the material of the building itself, that's not going to that's not going to stick with the actual rezoning, yeah. right? I mean, I, my condition is based on any commercial use. Right. The, and, and so my 10-foot buffer on each side, which is why I feel like minimal, was based on the commercial zoning because you're right. I mean, unless we say otherwise, whatever's allowed in that zoning, they could come back with. Mm -hmm. and, and so I was trying to be cognizant of that without trying to restrict uses, which is something we try not to do, but sometimes mm -hmm. you need to to make it work. And is the applicant okay with the 10 foot? I haven't heard from Mr. Stacy about that 10 foot. Well, that's <coughs> if he is, then. Well, let's, let's, control. Control. let's hear him and see okay. Okay. Yeah. when we get to that point, that's we discuss good. it after. He, he, he was okay with the intent, Commissioner, but I haven't heard from him since I sent it to him in writing. says, here's what I think this looks like if you put it in writing. Okay. So we have yes. extinguished the questions to staff, so let's move forward. Anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Good evening, <coughs> sir. You will state your name and your address for the public record, please, sir. Yes, sir. Harry Stacy Stowe, 1961 Beach Road, Morgan, Georgia, 31638. And I'm looking to do this, if I can answer some of the questions I've heard before. I'm literally looking to do about 1,700 feet in the future, maybe two, three years from now. Right now we're starting on the first 300 to 400 feet from the north to the south. There's a, there's a power line across the property, which you got right away, of course, by those folks before. There's a power line across the property on east and west bound. Plenty on stopping right there at this moment. And no more clearing from that point further south. Other than that, you can see the drawings what I've, I've got and a 10 foot. Variance is on the back of the buffer is good. And then we had a 20 foot on both sides. So uh, if I'm understanding that correctly, it's about to be 10 foot and center on a buffer on each side. So yes, I'm good with that. I can just rearrange the property and make it a little longer as far as what my first initiation was. And that's no problem. Thank you, sir. Huh? Can you yeah. Anything else? Any questions? You can just discuss the open storage, or are you good with that? No, I, I, I see that at some point you're planning on, um, like, oversized storage for boats and things like that, right? right? right. Is that in your first phase, or is that, like... Um, yes, I want it to be, it's right now it's going to be how far I'm put back and which buildings I can move if I'm regulated a certain amount of buildings. Now I can feel probably I do want to go ahead and start some of that outdoor storage. Okay. It's going to be a real convenience for the neighborhood on 41. It's got the covenants that can't or no, there's... 800 some houses on North 41 there. Yeah. You know, I mean, they can't park no boats, no trailers, no campers, or these anything. So, right. I, know you real, I know you realize there's one up there in the industrial park that can take higher. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. But they're maxed out. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Any other questions for the presenter? Richard Levin, I see you just... You I'm good. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to miss you. It's stuff. Appreciate you coming forward, sir. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone who wish to speak, you know, speak in favor, sir? I just got some questions. Uh, well, give me just, just a second. Okay. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of the request? There being none, anyone wishing to speak against this request, this will be your opportunity, sir. I'm not really here to speak for it or against it. Let me get your name and address for her record. I'm Robert McLeod. I live at 1445 North Forest Drive. Thanks, sir. I'm uh, one of the owners of the subdivision uh, across the street there at Union Springs. And I know uh, I'm not. I'm not speaking in favor of this, I'm not speaking against it. I'm just, I've got some questions that I want to get some interest in. Is, is he going to have a business there, a little application business there on that same property? Mr. Robert, he wants to have his office mm -hmm. for his metal fabrication business, yeah. which is allowed in that zoning, but to do any kind of 
manufacturing, et cetera, that would not be allowed. And he's not proposing that, but it looks. My biggest concern, I mean, we've got, we've got unsold blocks that are within probably 150 mm -hmm. of where the block was going to go. And uh, I know what we did out there was for conservation substitutes mm -hmm. in Lyons County. We've got about a 50 acre site out there for uh, residents to enjoy the trails and so forth. Uh, I have I have a big concern about sound. We put a uh, we put a burn all the way across the front of our property, landscaped it, just to block out the interstate noise. So I, if, if there's any kind of fabrication or anything, we have a big concern about it. Uh, I definitely you know want buffers uh, to, to buffer this. And also, too, uh, another thing I'd be concerned about is lighting. You know, if, if, it's a, if it's really lit up at night for security reasons, trying to light it in a way where it didn't interfere with the property that's across the street. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, that, Jason, that, that's a very stirring final plan concept, concept is. Outer, outdoor lighting has to be shielded and directed to avoid direct illumination of adjacent properties as measured at the property line. So, so that's, that's a standard requirement. That's a standard requirement. I, I personally looked at buying that property myself a couple of years ago, doing the same thing, but I really, when I put all the numbers together, I couldn't make it work. Hmm. Yeah, that's what, but that's, that's all I got to say. I'm not for it, I'm not against it. I just, you know, I just want to protect the things. But, Mr. Robert, if I may, have two observations. One, I would think that this might help in the buffering, um, the interstate noise. I think it might help buffer for your neighborhood. Um, and then secondly, it might make um, it might make your lots um, sell a little bit easier if people know that they have this type of storage so close to their home. Well, I think I think there's some positives there. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's, if it's not done. Property and it doesn't look right. good, it's going to be an ISO. Right. I, I that's what I don't want. I don't want an ISO out there. I think I the buffering would. If it's, if, it's, if it's done properly, and I think it would be good buffering and you know, looks good, I think it would be an asset. I agree. Like I said, I'm not, not for it, I'm not against it. I just it's a hope that it's done in a way it doesn't hurt the neighborhood. Anyone here, anyone else wishing to speak against this request and come forward at this time? Anyone else wishing to speak against this request? If you don't mind, sir, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Wayne Hughes with uh, 5140 North Green Boulevard. I'm I'm just going to cloud. I'm not necessarily opposed, but a year ago I purchased a lot in Union Springs without any thought that anything like this would be almost directly across the road. Um, I understand the nature of the property being so narrow and difficult to develop it in some residential way, but um, I, I just, and maybe I'm a little ambiguous, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to development. But to see commercial development right there, two miles south of the Ahara, two miles or so north of Scruggs, where there's not really no commercial property there, even though it borders I 75, that does concern me even as far as knowing that I'm, I have sold our house and we're expecting to start building hopefully in the next couple of months and how that's going to affect us. Again, I'm not saying I'm opposed, but I do have concerns about what that's going to do to the neighborhood, what it's going to do to property values. But some of the things you've said have helped me, uh, encouraged me, and, and you know, I, as far as how this will be done and, and, and the, the buffers, the landscaping, et cetera. But I don't know if anybody can really say how that's going to affect the overall property values or, or impact the neighborhood as a whole. It's one of the few neighborhoods anywhere in Lowndes County, especially North Lowndes, where you can buy an acre lot. And that's why we 
wanted to live there when we found out about it. Um, I just wanted to express my concerns. Um, I don't have uh, any issue with somebody who wants to develop property. I just want to be sure that in the rezoning of it, I don't know how this, I, I know the proposal here is rezoning, and the intent is to put the storage units on it. Uh, and a question I have is once it's rezoned, can there be a change about what is actually put on there? If the zoning is changed, can there be a change in how it's developed within the framework of that particular zone? Jason, I'll let you address that. So when in this rezoning, Mr. Hughes, we, and I can give you, I'll give you a copy of all the zoning's uh, uses that are allowed. Unless the commission or the county commission says these uses aren't allowed, then you're right, you're approving a block of uses. And our challenge is to make sure is that block appropriate or not. And I'll give you a copy of what how those blocks break down. But you're right, I mean, we talk about many stores because that's what the current property owner, that's his intention, that's what he wants to do. But the zoning will allow more than many storage. Um, and in my opinion, those uses are appropriate, but you you can see in there some that, okay, well, I don't like the way that looks, or I'm not sure about that one. Certainly, you can look at those, and I'll give you a copy right here about that. You know, and I don't want to waste your time. Just simply say that I know there are other things that could go there, and I know the whole idea of trailers, and you know, nobody in that area is going to want that. I think there would be serious opposition to that. Um, I guess my concern is that it be done well and look good, it be, you know, something that's an enhancement, not a detriment to the appearance of the area. Um, I know several people that live on Union Road. I'm not from here, but I've been here almost 18 years. Thank you, sir. Um, and, you know, we're really going to love Lyles County and, uh, and intend to retire here in a few years. But, uh, I just, I feel like I just need to express my own concerns about it, whether or not I'm opposed, I cannot say. I just initially when I heard about it, I thought I'm absolutely opposed to it. My my concern is if not this, then what can go on that piece of property? How can it be developed? That would be any better usage of it. That might, you know, anything can be put there that might be um, less acceptable, I guess you put it that way. But I just uh, wanted to share my own thoughts. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Hughes. Right, we have exhausted our time on in favor of and against, so we'll go straight into commissioner discussions. Commissioner, we have a discussion for us for a question on this. Yes, actually. <laughs> I, I do want to point out that uh, this gentleman brought some good points about permissible use within the commercial general or general commercial use. And some of those may not be compatible. Um, or may not be may not make good neighbors to a residential area like what, what's being described. One of these is club. Mm -hmm. um, then there is also vehicle sales. So dealership like businesses. I'm not sure you would want that facing um, these residential the res residential development and uh, trades and repair services. So mechanical type repair shops, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I saw auto repair in there, but so these three, I would definitely club. I would definitely want to put a condition on that if this were to go forward. Okay. Um, I don't think vehicle repair is allowed. Only I think, I think it's allowed in CC, but not CG. Which what? is one of our reasons for what is detail shop? Car washing facility. That's just okay. That's right. So that's just to bring your that's car, car okay. That's right, car wash facility. <clears throat> but I would probably the only one that I would have a little concern there is I think that one of the reasons it's appealing for Mr. Stubbs and Ms. Gaskins is that trades and repair. Mm -hmm. I think that's how they're fitting their metal construction office mm -hmm. into this. Because I, I think their intent, and please feel free to ask them, is I think out of the main office, they not only want to manage the mini storage, they want to be able to run their metal construction business out of. Because right now, I think they have a home occupation that they're realizing this didn't work, and we need, you know, maybe this could do both. 
Well, the, the way I'm to classify about this professional office, I mean, it's, a, it's an office use, business use. It's not, it's not where repair is actually being done. That's what I'm understanding. I, I agree. I agree. I just, when, when I press Ms. Carmela about where would you classify this, well, that's more of a trades and repair use. Mm -hmm. Now, I hate to clip their wings on that. Mm -hmm. I, okay, I you know, but I, I hear you loud and clear. I just, I would want to have another conversation with her before the county commission meeting to make sure trade and repair wasn't going to clip their wings for what they want to do in addition to that. Because I I don't remember her saying professional office. I remember her saying, well, they're more of a trade and repair type business, and that's allowed in both, or in CG. That's the only one that I have that concerns over club, at lodge, et cetera. Fine. I just feel like it's not likely, but okay, yes, they could be a bad neighbor. Vehicle sales, debatable, but I understand. But then the trades and repair, yes, I mean, you could have, um, we restrict outdoor storage in CG, mm -hmm. so outdoor storage is actually not allowed. So if you do have any storage, which is where I think the negative impacts for trades and repair come in for me, is, you know, you get into um, some uses that have outdoor storage that are kind of unsightly. We don't allow outdoor storage in CG. Maybe that I feel a little bit better yeah, about trading. It's not just outdoor, it's also sound. So yeah. if, if, if this were to overlap at all with any type of manufacturing, and you, I think that becomes an issue sure. in that neighborhood. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason, do you know if he's going to be parking all of his trucks at the office? I he's don't, sir. His head, he's changing his head. Okay. No, no. That would be a lot of early morning and afternoon noise and mm -hmm. stuff. This is strictly just your administrative offices. Yes, yeah, just okay. Jack, Ms. Jackson has to be the only one there for much media periodically. Do you have a discussion for me? There being none, I will entertain a motion, motion on this request this evening. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wills? I'm going to make an attempt. <laughs> um, I make a motion. We recommend approval with the recommendation from the Planning Commission for the 10 foot buffer as it's described here and Put an exclusion on. I was trying. I was looking through on this. What I was doing a while ago. Sure. Um, on certain type businesses to protect the local property owners. Um, clubs was one of them. Um, alcohol package stores. Mm -hmm. Bear with me a minute. It, it, it says gasoline stations. I'm not sure that that would be one. Is that permissible in that? I just gave away my use chart. It says that uh, it is. It says it is. So I'm going to I mean, take yes. That. If it's in there, is it yeah. that CG column? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be something we might want to admit. Um, Commissioner Willis, you're wanting to attach the emissions through the condition already stated? Yep. Okay, so and that's all I really see right off right now. So we have a motion from Commissioner Willis with uh, adding to the additional condition. Do we have a second on the motion, Mr. Chair? Oh, yeah. I would like more clarification on what we're admitting. I'm a little confused. Is that wrong discussion on this? Is it all around? What? It, he is, I would like to see the list of what we're trying to admit. It, well, you don't have your packet, do you? No, I do not. Okay. There's, there's about a four-page document. In the, in the, uh, so we're going to go with every one of those. No, so we, yeah. We're just going to admit the one that Commissioner admit. Willis has stated. Yeah, you want more. Clubs, package store, stores, gasoline stations. Houses there. And Mr. Chairman, if I could. Uh, and, and I'm open to changing the motion if you see another one there. Uh, clubs and lodges and stuff. So Commissioner Willis, it's basically no the line item for clubs, lodges, etc. No alcohol package stores and no gas stations are allowed on the subject property. Is the direction you're going to say that's, that's what he's everything about. else is allowed, Commissioner Hightower, but those are not allowed. We should say something else.
had a little bit of a meeting. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of this uh, proposal, okay. and uh, I see we're going to be a lot of daycare center, which is going to be pretty darn noisy. That's one of the <laughs> but we don't want a gas station. I don't understand it, but let's move ahead. Okay, so we have a motion. Traffic-wise, I think, is my, my position coming in now. I have a motion. Looking for a second. I'll second the motion. We have a motion from Mr. Willis with some uh, amendments to the condition. We have a second from Mr. Roundtree. Any discussion on the motion? So there being none, all in favor of the motion, please see by raise your right hand. That's five for all opposed. Six five raise your hand. Two nays. So the motion carries approval on this case this evening. Alright guys, I appreciate everybody's